Interwest is an independent retail insurance brokerage offering a full range of business and personal insurance products and services. We proudly partner with WCF Insurance and collaboratively serving our mutual clients. We also passionately support public television and its educational programming. Pebble Beach Golf Links is one of the most beautiful meetings of land and water on Earth. But this is more than just eye-catching landscape. For a golfer, the mere mention of the name is intoxicating. This is a place where beauty, history, and some of the greatest moments in sports all blend together. And now, Pebble Beach Golf Links has reached the century mark. I'm Frank LaRosa. Join us as we celebrate this venerable and iconic destination right now on Pebble Beach at 100. Welcome to the Pebble Beach Visitor Center, where more than two million people come from all over the globe every year to experience one of golf's most famous, even sacred places. Pebble Beach Golf Links is 100 years old. Now, most of its history is tied to the sport of professional and amateur golf. And for many casual players, it's a coveted destination for a very special golf getaway. But what you may not know is that Pebble Beach actually has deep roots in California's history. With the California gold rush of 1849, countless pioneers rushed to California to seek their fortunes. Among those pioneers were Charles Crocker, Mark Hopkins, Collis Huntington, and Leland Stanford, known together as the Big Four. These men formed the Central Pacific Railroad and built the western portion of America's first transcontinental railroad. Beginning in 1869, the railroad helped jumpstart California's fledgling real estate industry by transporting visitors and future homeowners to the state's picturesque coastline. To serve those visitors, Pacific Improvement Company, also headed by the Big Four, began planning for a luxury resort to introduce the world to the magic of Monterey Bay. In June of 1880, Pacific Improvement Company completed construction of one of the finest luxury hotels in North America, the Hotel Del Monte in Monterey. A year later, Pacific Improvement Company opened the scenic 17-mile drive, meandering along the beaches and among the forested areas between Monterey and Carmel. It was offered as a pleasure excursion for hotel guests. Del Monte Golf Course followed, opening in May of 1897 as a nine-hole course. But settlement of this beautiful area was just beginning. In 1909, the Pacific Improvement Company offered residential lots along this majestic Northern California coastline. Six years later, in 1915, the 29-year-old Samuel Finley Brown Morse, a distant cousin of telegraph inventor Samuel Finley Brees Morse, was hired to manage the Pacific Improvement Company. Morse convinced the board to build Pebble Beach Golf Links to further spark development in the area. It all came together on February 22, 1919 with the grand opening of Pebble Beach Golf Links and the Del Monte Lodge. I mean, it all started with Samuel Morse. So sure. just his vision and his ability to convince the ownership group at that point in time, because he was brought on to run it to go in a whole different direction, not build those home sites, instead build a golf course and preserve a lot of land, that, that has to be highlight number one. Turning this picturesque natural landscape into a one-of-a-kind golf destination didn't come easy. It required vision and the relentless efforts of a wide array of golfers and others who truly appreciated this unique spot. Pebble Beach Golf Links has always been a picturesque landmark along the stunning California coastline, but it's taken many decades for it to become the world-famous golf venue that it is today. 
Samuel F. B. Morse approached Jack Neville and Douglas Grant, two of California's most accomplished amateur golfers, to design the golf links. Their figure eight layout placed as many holes as possible along this rocky and beautiful Monterey coastline, with each hole testing the best golfers by leaving them long irons into small greens. Their initial design efforts were followed and improved upon by others. To get the 1919 course accepted by the California Golf Association, Samuel F. B. Morse first turned to Harold Sampson, a celebrated U.S. golf professional serving as the Del Monte Golf Course head golf professional. With the help of a number of top amateurs, Sampson improved the playability of the course. Following the 1921 State Amateur Championship, Pebble Beach Golf Links was asked to resolve complaints about its short par-4 finishing hole. An English banker, amateur golfer, and visionary golf course designer named William Herbert Fowler was selected to help remedy the complaints. Fowler's redesign added 156 yards to the existing hole along the coast and converted the 18th hole into what is today one of the most breathtaking 543-yard par-5 finishing holes in all of golf. In 1926, famous English golf course architect Alistair McKenzie redesigned the 8th and 13th holes to make the attempt more challenging and the reward for success more fulfilling. In preparations for its first major, the 1929 U.S. Amateur Championship, Pebble Beach Golf Links formed a team to reshape and rebunker each green. That team was comprised of Robert Hunter, an American amateur golfer, and Henry Chandler Egan, a two-time amateur champion and golf course architect. The duo transformed the course by creating a dogleg first hole, lengthening the second and 14th par five holes, relocating the ninth hole green and 10th hole tee, and extending the 16th hole by another 100 yards. Contemporary golf history titans have also left their indelible marks on this course. One of golf's greatest champions, Jack Nicklaus, created the new fifth hole in 1998. For that to happen, a prime oceanfront lot had to be reacquired and transformed into today's critically acclaimed par three, which favors a Nicholas style high fade. In 2010, Arnold Palmer lent his expertise to make notable improvements, ushering in the new era of golf at Pebble Beach Golf Links. Under Palmer's direction, four greens and 16 bunkers were rebuilt. 11 tees were enhanced, six holes had trees added, and the total length of the course was extended to 7,040 yards. Uh, what is it about Pebble that makes it your favorite course? Uh, uh, number one, I just like the layout, small greens, and uh, it was intriguing to me to play in the at and and how hard it could play that time of year because it was wet. You play number nine, I'd be getting a wood at number nine, and then I could play in the state amateur and I'd be hitting an eight or nine iron just because it's fast and dry and so on and so forth. But I think it's the ultimate golf course. You can shoot a really low round or if you get off, you can, I got the shanks one time, and I, by the time I got to 10, I'd had four shanks, and I had 160 yards. I hit a forward because I didn't want to hit it down <laughs> on the beach. So I, I have a lot of memories of this place. Many changes over the years have transformed Pebble Beach Golf Links into one of the most challenging and exciting courses in all of professional golf. It's little wonder that some of the sport's most unforgettable tournaments have happened here with some of the game's greatest players. This boy is a magician. The fact that we have held 13 championships here, starting with the uh, U.S. Amateur in 1929. Of course, we just held our sixth U.S. Open here a couple of months ago. That was something Samuel Morris always wanted to do. The 1929 U.S. Amateur Championship was the first major hosted at Pebble Beach Golf Links. It also marked the first time the USGA had conducted a major championship west of the Mississippi. 1940 was the first year the U.S. Women's Amateur was hosted at Pebble Beach Golf Links. Winner of that championship, Betty Jamison, 
went on to become one of the founding members of the LPGA Tour. During the 1947 U.S. Amateur, when asked about Pebble Beach golf links, USGA President Charles W. Littlefield said, if I was going to be president of the USGA any longer, I'd hold them all here. This is the grandest place to hold a golf tournament I've ever seen. 1947 was also the year Pebble Beach Golf Links began hosting the Bing Crosby National Pro-Am, famously referred to as the Clambake. The annual charity event was brimming with sports and Hollywood celebrities partaking in golf, cocktails, and, well, a, a party. Every time I play Pebble Beach and I get to a certain spot on any of these 18 holes, it brings back a Jack Lemmon story because he was he was larger than life. We never made the cut as a team, but but he always was entertaining. And he would do some crazy things on the course, almost at the expense of making a birdie or a par, just to just to give to the people because he knew how important the tournament was to this area and to basically the PGA Tour. After Crosby's death in 1977, his family continued to host the event for eight more years until the AT&T Corporation became the title sponsor in 1986. What was fashioned by Bing Crosby is known today as the annual AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. Of all the events that you can play in, not only at a historical site such as Pebble Beach, but to play in an amateur pro-am event where it's just you and your amateur, and you see the amateurs that compete and play the clam bake, the great actors, the great celebrities, and even today in the AT&T uh, Pebble Beach National Pro-Am, we've got athletes, we've got political people, we've got um, actors and actresses. I mean, it's just, it's just one of those worldwide pro-ams that everybody would pretty much die to be able to play him. The 59th PGA Championship was hosted in 1977, and Lanny Watkins became the winner of the first sudden death playoff in major championship history. Pebble Beach Golf Links has hosted the US Open six times, first in 1972, and most recently in 2019. It's the first public golf course to host a US Open and some of the greatest moments in all of golf have occurred right here on these grounds. It's got 202 yards to the hole. Tiger's performance in 2000 uh, to win a national open by 15 shots, uh, to be 12 under par, and the next best was three over. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty amazing, and probably uh, the call that I am most remembered with uh, was on uh, uh, Friday, he hit the ball in the right rough at the sixth hole, the par five, and the second shot then requires you hit it up over a cliff in, with a steep face. So most guys in the U.S. Open rough that had driven it over in the right rough had pitched out sideways and then had to play their third up over this giant mountain. And Tiger uh, all of a sudden uh, pulls out a club and aims toward the green. I think he could probably get a seven or eight iron on it. He may get it all the way up there. And he and he hits it about 240 up over this hill and runs it up on the edge of the green. And I said, it's just not a fair fight. No, it really isn't, Roger. <laughs> In 2023, Pebble Beach Golf Links will add yet another achievement to its memorable journey by hosting the U.S. Women's Open for the first time in the course's history. Now you may think that Pebble Beach is an exclusive experience just for the wealthy, and true, it can be a pricey destination, but it's also deeply committed to supporting charities and giving back to the community, essential core values to the culture at Pebble Beach Company. Now we just go back to the start of our company 100 years ago and Sammy Morse's vision um, because Pebble Beach Company means so much to the community. And if you look at um, a lot of the things that have gone on in the community, Pebble Beach is involved in, and in many cases behind mm -hmm. the start of it. It's a core value we have about helping our neighbors. Uh, we have a Pebble Beach Company Foundation that's very active. And probably the biggest impact we make is through our special events. 
As a philanthropic arm, Pebble Beach Company Foundation receives contributions from annual events held at Pebble Beach Resorts and in turn donates millions of dollars to more than 80 regional and national youth-focused nonprofits. The annual AT&T uh, Pebble Beach Pro-Am will donate $16 million wow. to community, wow. all generated from that event, along with the uh, Pure Insurance Championship and then our annual car show, the Concours, which is the number one car show in the world, and generates um, in excess of $2 million to charity. And we're heavily involved with organizations like the Boys and Girls Club here in the community and um, you know, a lot of personal involvement that many of our employees um, you know, contribute uh, in terms of supporting organizations. So charity is, in charitable endeavors is a huge part of our company and what we're all about. Steve John is the CEO of the Monterey Peninsula Foundation, and um, that encompasses a lot of things. Tell me, Steve, how it relates to the tournaments and, and ultimately to Pebble Beach. Yeah, so we're the, the uh, Monterey Peninsula Foundation is a host organization for both the ATT Pebble Beach Pro Am and the Pure Insurance Championship, which impacts the first tee specifically. And all net proceeds from both tournaments go to back to, back to our communities that we serve Santa Cruz, San Benito, Monterey County. Last year alone was $15.6 million. Wow. Those charitable donations make a huge difference in enhancing quality of life in Monterey County and its surrounding areas. But Pebble Beach Company's charitable giving doesn't end there. Their support of important youth development programs such as the First Tee helps build character, confidence, and life skills in a whole new generation of golfers who grow with their own unforgettable memories. It's amazing. I mean, this course is its unbelievable. Everybody talks about it. I've been, ask, been asking questions, what's your dream course to play? I, I say that. This is it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing in the Pure Insurance Open for with the first tee in the Champions Tour. It's going to be a great opportunity. We get to play Pebble Beach and Poppy Hills. I'm playing with Ratif Goosen. He's an amazing player. I can't wait to learn from him and uh, on and off the golf course. It's going to be an amazing opportunity. I'm just so excited. <laughs> like This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, so I'm just going to make the best of it, I think. and meet a bunch of people, hopefully make some connections that last for a long time. Dylan, <laughs> you just came off the 18th. That had to be a, 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 an incredible thrill for oh, you. Oh, it was amazing. It was, it was just a great time out there. First time playing here? Yeah. What were you thinking when you stood on the first tee? Well, I've been here so many times, but I've never really gotten to play it. So I was just going through all the times that I've been here and watch people tee off, but never really gotten to play. And it's just, it's amazing to finally be out here and being able to hit on the hit on the course. You just walked off 18. How's a guy from Sacramento feel about uh, playing Pebble Beach for the first time? Yeah, it's pretty cool. All the views out there are. I'm not not really used to it um, from Sacramento, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, especially playing those holes on the front nine that um, were all in the ocean. Those, that was probably my favorite part of the. Course. Yeah, they do have a better ocean than we have in Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's no question if, if this tournament were not at Pebble Beach as the home golf course, we wouldn't nearly have the impact. We're so thankful that Pebble Beach has embraced what we do and has partnered with us in, in giving away a, a, a very large amount. It's quite impressive, but it's, it's, a, it's a great collaboration of, of efforts. Pebble Beach Golf Links is in good hands. Some of the owners are famous, Others less known, but they all remain committed to making this destination the best it can be. By the end of February 1919, Samuel F. B. Morse formed the Del Monte Properties Company and acquired Pebble Beach Golf Links and Del Monte Lodge from the Pacific Improvement Company. That $1.4 million acquisition included 18,000 acres of land on the Monterey Peninsula all of the Pacific Grove and Pebble Beach areas, Del Monte forest lands traversed by the 17 mile drive, Del Monte Rancho, Hotel Del Monte, Pebble Beach Lodge, and the capital stock of the Monterey County Waterworks, which at the time supplied water to the towns of Monterey, Pacific Grove, and Carmel. For the next 50 years, Samuel F. B. Morris continued his mission to ensure that easements would preserve hundreds of acres of forest and coastline along the 17-mile drive for generations to come. 
His era ended when Morse died in May of 1969. Ten years later, Pebble Beach Corporation was purchased by 20th Century Fox with profits from their blockbuster film, Star Wars, and reorganized as Pebble Beach Company. Through much of the turbulent 1990s, the Pebble Beach Golf Links was owned and operated by the Lone Cypress Company, formed by Japanese investors. In the summer of 1999, an all-star team of investors acquired the Pebble Beach Company for over $800 million, promising never to sell the company to another ownership group again. When we put the ownership group together 20 years ago, and you think about the four people leading the effort, um, you know, Peter Uberoth, the former commissioner of baseball, time man of the year. Um, you know, Dick Ferris, who was CEO of United Airlines at the age of 39, an unbelievable businessman. And of course, two other individuals that don't need any <laughs> introduction to anyone. You know, yeah. Clint Eastwood, um, former mayor of Carmel, has an unbelievable presence in this community, as well as the whole world, um, and what he's brought to our organization. And somebody that, uh, um, changed the game of golf and will never be forgotten, and that's Arnold Palmer. I mean, how could you put a, those four individuals together? I mean, it's like a, you know, it's a dream team. It's an unbelievable team that we had right from the beginning. And for me personally, having the privilege of working with all of them has been, you know, it's like a dream. Bob, you've been coming to, uh, to Pebble Beach for so many years. <laughs> yeah, I, you could really say decades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the first time you, you played here. First time had to be 60, 70 years ago. And at that time, you know, the course was a little bit different, but the whole atmosphere is about the same. The people running Pebble Beach today have just done an outstanding job. And it is a little bit different in a lot of ways what they've done with the property, but super, super fabulous place. We have 1,700 employees. Wow. I mean, it's a very difficult thing to describe in terms of uh, how great our team is. Our employees don't consider it a job. They consider it a privilege to work here. They take such pride in what they do. And, you know, that is conveyed to the guest. When talking about our culture, another thing is we're never resting on our laurels. We're always trying to get better. It's one of our core values is to keep improving. Like this visitor center, you know, this was an improvement. We're really excited about the Visitor Center. We've never had a place where you could go to learn about the history. And now this is the start of everybody's tour, is to come through this Visitor Center. And I think our whole team did a great job. The company says it's committed to continuing the legacy of the Pebble Beach founder with ongoing improvements to the course, accommodations, and other amenities. You're always looking at what things we can do to improve the experience for our guests. A hundred years of that. Yes, a hundred years. Samuel F. B. Morse, he was a man uh, way ahead of his time in terms of how he thought about things and wanted to conserve this area for people to be able to come and visit Pebble Beach, visit the, uh, you know, everything that this area has to offer. And so he didn't want to develop the land. He came up with the idea of a golf course and will preserve all of this uh, for generations to come. When you think about what, he, what his vision was 100 years ago, you know, I think he'd be pretty proud of what it looks like today, too, because we've, you know, we've continued on uh, and moved forward with what he started. It's a spectacular place, this entire forest, and it's, it's neat to see what's transpired because this golf course has gotten nothing but better. I mean, the addition of different bunkers, the addition of the new number five hole, yeah. bar three, I mean, completely different hole, but actually a much better hole than the old hole. Sure. Uh, it's, it's, it's a magical place. This is, if you, if you went to church and you found yourself at Pebble Beach, you knew you made it. <laughs> we just want Pebble Beach to continue to be a national treasure continue with the tradition that uh, Samuel Moore started 100 years ago. It's a special place. 
and we always want it to be that way. We look forward to continuing to preserve this national treasure, make it something that people from all over the world can come to every day. It's a public golf course, and it's the number one public golf course in the world. Anybody can play it. Yes, it's expensive, but the experience is uh, second to none. And so we want to continue to preserve that and continue down that road. For many, visiting Pebble Beach Golf Links is a lifelong dream. It's a bucket list destination for golfers and a treasured Northern California jewel. Now, if you've had a chance to tee it up here, you're fortunate. If you've had a chance to explore the course and surrounding Monterey Peninsula, that's pretty special too. If not, I hope you get the chance soon to experience this special place as it enters its second century. I'm Frank LaRosa. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the first tee. The great Latin described this beautiful place. Extraordinary. Roller coaster ride. Amazing. <laughs> Magnificent. Experiential. Stunning. Breathtakingly gorgeous. Life-changing. Magical. Unforgettable. Iconic. I would say special. Mystical. One of a kind. Pebble Beach is the most serene place I've ever been. Impeccable. Breathtaking. Paradise. Why would you go anywhere else? InterWest is an independent retail insurance brokerage offering a full range of business and personal insurance products and services. We proudly partner with WCF Insurance and collaboratively serving our mutual clients. We also passionately support public television and its educational programming.